But let me um, play this clip real quick. U.S. military power rests on the dollar hegemony. Yeah, like mm -hmm. like the somebody posted a, like a meme on Twitter. You know, with the with the U.S. Seventh Fleet. You know, all these aircraft carriers sailing the oceans. They say, "Oh, this is what this is what backs the U.S. dollar." But guess what? That the U.S. <laughs> military hard power is also backed by the U.S. dollar. It's it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing. Right. You can say, oh, yeah, dollar is backed by the U.S. military po hard power. But guess what? U.S. military hard power is backed by the dollar. Mm -hmm. so once that, 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 that the, the dollar goes down, uh, you, you are not going to be able to fund all that military hard power anymore. And especially when you don't even have industry. You know, in China, they have, they have like 13 shipyards to, to United States, seven shipyards. And and, and 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 just one of China's shipyard, the Zhangnan shipyard outside of Shanghai, is bigger than all of United States shipyard. So so they they have the capacity. I mean, it's it's, it's mind boggling to think that U.S. will win a conventional war against China because they can just out outproduce you. They they have they have the population, they have the industrial capacity. I mean. The finances? You, yeah, you have. You just have IOU. You just have a printing machine, and, and, and it's like that, that. That printing machine is no good in time for war. You know, they're not gonna. China is not gonna take dollar payment when you're waging war on them. Yeah, right. like, so, yeah. but yeah. but what what do you Carl? What do you think uh, uh, on this situation? I'm glad you brought that up because if war breaks out, I believe that the United States. I know it sounds crazy. But I believe that they're trying to choose the best of bad choices. If you understand what I'm saying, they see the handwriting on the wall and what they're believing. Well, maybe we all of our war gaming showed us that we can't beat China in the Asia Pacific. But they show us that the longer we wait, the worse it'll be for us. So let us just choose. Maybe we can throw a Hail Mary and catch the catch the ball in the end zone and and, and beat. Uh, the the Chinese maybe we can do that don't you think because I, it that, seems that way they're, they're trying to choose the best of bad policies that is a gamble that played by the Japanese Imperial Army in 1941 I mean that's what they thought they thought okay well United States is big industrial giant but uh, but if we if we don't you know beat them now we're never gonna beat them so we might as well you know we, we do this pearl harbor thing maybe we'll maybe we'll even the odds a little bit i mean but this is the exact same uh line of thinking that got japan defeated it's the city pulverized and nuked and and this is i mean why would the united states they think things will turn out differently i mean the, 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 this is this is really, I mean, okay. Oh, well, I know why. Because they're not you. They're they're not only full of hubris, but they're also dumb. You know, most of our <laughs> policy decision makers are 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 dumb. But I I I I don't think uh, um, the, the, the 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 I think they're still gonna try to do Cold War first before the hot war. They're still gonna try to do Cold War 2.0 to see if they're gonna cause the China to collapse like uh, like Soviet Union. Um, you know, I think it's going to take them five, ten years to figure out that that won't work. <laughs> and, and, and hopefully by that time, it will be too late for for U.S. to change tack. Because, you know, I think I think give it give it five, ten years, uh, you know, China will be a position where you know, like it will be kind of um, like unstoppable, even if U.S. want to militarily con constrain China. This is this is my take. I I, I think that desperation as as um what is Jerry Salente used to say and he he often says um when people lose everything they lose it and i believe that is the case with you at the us elite they see the handwriting on the wall and they see that the empire is losing out and not just losing out but losing bad we're no longer the the number one economy we're no longer the number one investor we're no longer the number one trade partner to the world we're no longer the number one ma uh manufacturer or builder all of that has been usurped by china not only is that china is now um they no longer have antiquated um armed forces they have a fighting force um a ground forces they have the largest navy 
year a year and a half they're going to have the largest air force so now they they were going they're going to have three of the largest um portions of military fighting capacity i believe that they feel that they're losing everything and this causes them to be detached from reality and it causes them to lose it what say you but see the thing is rashid like us can still can be number two or even number three and still right. have a very rich very developed economy so what 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 they really fighting not to give up is hegemony that's right it's because they have to be number one they have to be on top of the world telling everybody what to do force everybody to 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 run according to their own ideas but but it, this is what drive them crazy but the, the craziest part is that doesn't have to be that way. Right. United States can still be a very rich and prosperous country if you just accept that it's one <coughs> among it's 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 one among equals. Uh, and, and 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 trade just 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 trade just trade with people and 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 you know and not demanding everybody to bend their knee to the to their idea of us hegemony because that's what breeds resentment that's why you know there's bricks that's why there's the dollarization <laughs> because the us is doing everything possible right now to alienate everybody to to to, to and and and, and uh, you know so so whatever they do is going to make the matter just even worse I mean, they're gonna they're lo gonna lose the hegemony even faster, you know. However tightly they try to cling on, clinging onto it. Um, yeah, that's my my rant. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're right on the money. Everybody in the chat, if you have uh, a, anything that you want call to um, direct uh, directly address, put it in the chat before we go off the air. Please do it. He has a family. We've had called on him for almost two hours, so please put your um question. Or your comment in the chat real quick and i'll try to put it up oh thank you too oh, i gotta put this up there you guys are amazing oh we appreciate that <laughs> <Thank you kids. laughs> so gotta go feed the water machine let's see um do you have anyone i know i know um we'll give it a second because it may take a little bit to type i know i'm not the most proficient typer so um and we'll, we'll see if they have any questions or any statements or anything any issues that they want you to address before we let you get out of here man because you I'm telling you, you kick butt, Carl. That's why I have to have you on my show a lot, man. I, I love your perspective. It, it, and not just on the, the Asia Pacific uh, perspective, but your, your knowledge globally on the, uh, the geopolitical outlook on things. I love that. Um, and then I love to let you go free so that you can, you can get it told to everybody. Um, well, thank okay. you, Rashid. I mean, I, I love talking to you, too, because you get it. You get it. Like, I, I don't have to explain. You, you, we are on the same wavelength here. <laughs> All right. Ken, I'm, I'm butchering your name. Ken Chow, um, he says, Carl, what roles do you think West will take? Well, I think the West will go uh, kick and screaming uh, to the – to the inevitable conclusion that whatever they're doing is not going to work. Um, I, I think, like I said, right now we're still, the West is still in the denial phase of the five-step grieving process. So my hope is <laughs> in the next five to 10 years, they move, they move beyond denials. You know, for, for the past decade or two, we're stuck. That's a place where we're stuck. We're stuck in denial. We never move forward. And my hope is we, we eventually move to complete this grieving process to finally come to acceptance that the U.S. hegemony is not sustainable. And, 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 and it's time to give it up, to give up the ghost. And, 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 and actually, <laughs> what are your thoughts on Vietnam buying F-16s? Vietnam have not verified, so it might be U.S. lying again. So, um, I, I, first of all, I don't think there's going to be a conflict between China and Vietnam, even over South China Seas. You know, they, they China and Vietnam has its own disagreement, but they have the disagreement forever. It's not something that F sixty some the couple or a couple dozen F-16 is going to change the, uh, the, the equation uh, because China and Vietnam has a very, also very important uh, trade relationship. And, and, and so that U.S. selling F-16 to Vietnam just means U.S. defense industry are getting extra dollars. Um, Vietnam is getting 
some F-16s, but it doesn't fundamentally it doesn't change anything. It's just mm. like even if U.S. If, if NATO sends F-16 to Ukraine, like they have been saying for a month, it's not going to change anything. I mean that that's an actual you know actual war situation. The F-16, the F-6, like like uh, China and Russia, they have fifth generation fighter planes, right? And and the, the F-16, they're, they're they're good planes, but they're they're no match for the fifth five fifth generation fighter planes. You know, they they won't even see the fifth generation fighter planes coming, and they will be shot down out of the sky by by missiles. So mm -hmm. so this is a uh, so F-16s, uh, you know, it, 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 it's it's nice back in the age of Top Gun, the first the, the first Top Gun movie. Now, now we're we're in the, we're, like like I, I I watched the Top Gun uh second Top Gun movie Maverick uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the flight over here because it's a long flight and uh, it's it's just pretty ridiculous. It's, it's a very contrived scenario. I mean, they're basically saying they're waging war on Russia. I mean, like I, it's it's pretty uh, thinly disguised. You know, they're talk, talking about this country with. Uh, doing nuclear refinement but they have the possessed fifth generation fighter you're like wait 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 there's only two other countries that have fifth generation <laughs> fighters that's either china or russia mm -hmm. which one are you going war against and, <laughs> and uh you know they, they have all this snow like uh, so i guess they're, 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 they mean just russia and, and and it's crazy and it's and the whole premise is so crazy it's like why would you go bomb a nuclear facility in Russia? <laughs> it, it, it's not a it's not a question of whether you could do it. It's a question is why would you why do would that? You? And, and, and that would you know would you know that's going to lead to a, a big big conflict. And and this is this is how the propaganda is sold to us. They never want us to ask the question why, but like oh we could do it. Look at our fancy jet <laughs> and our fancy maneuvers. And the, and he also put. You also try to portray U.S. as an underdog, right? Like yeah. you have to fly like outdated F F eighteen planes. <laughs> yes, that's true. Right now, U.S. will be underdog. They will be using outdated planes, <laughs> uh, and, and, and 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 but 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 you won't be you won't play out like Hollywood. Unfortunately, you, you, uh, will the U.S. commit to total suicide? I mean, U.S. is committing suicide right now. I mean, it's not. Like nobody is stopping, nobody is stopping those politicians in Washington. Uh, <laughs> other other policies is leading this country to fur like further down the hole that they dig themselves into. Um, so I, I I mean like no nobody believes no okay I don't think even them because they're so disconnected from reality they don't actually believe they're committing suicide. Like Rashid said, they start believing their own propaganda you know when you drink your own kool-aid it, it's, <laughs> it's it's they're too far gone these people you know it's uh uh we, we are just uh, i'm just here to as an observer you know like like that like a al space alien <laughs> <laughs> hovering over the continent and see what are these crazy humans doing to themselves <laughs> how, how, how do you see india looking like in the near future as far as superpower concern will india be the biggest pivot so India actually has it enjoys a very unique geopolitical situation because right now India is being wooed by all the powers on all sides. You know, India is part of the BRICS, but on the other hand, India is in the Quad. So uh, U.S. wants India to be in the anti-China alliance. Um, but the recent the, the, the India -Can Canadian row, I think that exposed a big rift in um it, it it's it's a mentality it's a mentality it's like us could just accept india's position as a independent uh, a great power and try to work with it that might have made the par partnership work but us don't like partners they they, they they want vassal states they want people who unquestionably follow us policy mm -hmm. in every everything this is why when India chose not to go like all totally against Russia, because India has a traditional friendship with First Soviet Union and mm -hmm. Russia, India get most of its armament from Russia. There's no, and they're getting most of the energy from Russia. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for them to go against their own self-interest, mm -hmm. sanction Russia. And would that happen? U.S. is trying to like, you know, trying to light a fire, trying to, trying to, uh, you know, trying to, trying to pull, put the Indian over the fire a little bit through their proxy Canada 
but mm-hmm. this is going to backfire because mm-hmm. you know like in, in, like 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 india right now they they could have decided to sit on the sideline or or they can straddle the fence so to speak and 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 get the best um get the best from both sides but us is saying no 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 you can't do that you can you, you 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 i i understand your hustle you, you know you have to be unquestionably our vassal and ple- pledge your allegiance and bend your knee uh, i don't think india is going to do that so we're going to have to see how this uh, fallout coming out of the india canada role that's that's playing out right now but i, I think india will continue to stick to its gun to to play an independent foreign policy but as far as uh, uh india itself its development i mean india has a lot of potential it's a wor- now it's the world's largest population it has, its population has surpassed china but india lacks uh, lacks behind in uh, infrastructure public education and so india has a lot of work to do um it, whether uh, India can accomplish what China did in the last 40 years. That remains to be seen. I mean, I, I, um, because to, to be honest, India would need major, major reforms, uh, both uh, economic, social, and political, uh, structural reform to 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 kind of make that big strides that China did. You know, it took China a revolution, a civil war. And the revolution to kind of clean the house mm-hmm. and, and then to 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 build things to the ground. The India didn't have that kind of you know dramatic transition, but they basically uh, you know they went from being a British colony where it was run by these Brits at the top and all these Indian this uh, this uh, compa- Indian comparators to the British to play as a middle management to transition when India became independent from like all this middle manage now all the top layer top management is gone but the the, the middle management that formerly run the british india company just moved to the top so nothing fundamentally changed <laughs> in india so so this is why um you know india's development has been lagging behind that of china and 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 you know where india future lies that that that, that largely depend on how the indian development uh, political development shape up in the coming future but regardless what it made i think indian government will continue to stick to a independent foreign policy they will not bend the knee to the united states because they want to be respected as a great power india has an ancient history as an ancient civilization you know they they uh see they're the big boy in the neighborhood they want to be respected as a big boy they they don't want to play a little hanger on like like Canada. <laughs> 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 okay, last question of the night from B1990. All right, we'll put this up on the screen. Okay, do you think the un- outbreak of unrest in the Balkans in Vietnam plus what's happening in Francophone Africa, part of the West grasp at the hegemony? Well, yeah. I think, you know, there, there's in internal development right there, there's there's some pro- internal development in the balkans in vietnam in, in fact francophone Af- especially in francophone africa it's like the the, the the african just getting fed up with the, the french imperialism mm-hmm. and and uh and and right now the the west is reacting the west is reacting they're always trying to exploit uh, a, a situation and uh, I, I don't think there's, you know, like, um, I don't think the West will, will be able to do much in Vietnam because Vietnam, uh, the Viet- Vietnamese government is still very much in control. A lot of people don't realize is that the, the, the Vietnam government structure is actually very similar to the Chinese government structure, which makes the, the U.S. action even more hypocritical because they, they're saying, we got to work with Vietnam to contain <laughs> Chinese authoritarianism. But, but, the, but the, the, the Vietnamese government structure and the Chinese government structure are basically the same. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and, and, and so this is all about geopolitics. And, 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 and again, Vietnam and, uh, and China, they may have their differences, but right now they also have... Uh, they all both sides also recognize they have more important trade relationship. In, in fact, before Biden went to Vietnam, uh, uh, Vietnamese top leadership met with the Chinese leader, leadership. I imagine they probably said something like, "Look, look, you know, you understand we're going to have try to have ties with America, but 
you know, we're not trying to backstab you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, so I mean, like, so I, I don't think U.S. will make much headway to to um, to kind of weaponize Vietnam against China the way they're doing with Philippines because Philippines is a lot is has been a U.S. colony for a long time. They have mm -hmm. they have this top tier the top tier Europe uh, Filipino leadership that have been long in the pockets of the United States and they have deep ties with the United States. Filipino air uh, Filipino military force is also have a long relationship with the United States. So there's all these people that US can buy off in the Philippines <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and they don't have that kind of dynamic in Vietnam, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so I don't, I don't think uh, whatever US is trying to do with Vietnam is, is going to work. Um, and, and uh, uh, Balkans, I'm not familiar with Balkans, so I'm not going to make my, my comments. I, I stay within my circle <laughs> of competence. <laughs> like Warren Buffett said, Falcon is outside of my circle of competence. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I think, uh, you know, what we're seeing in Franco for Africa is just part of, it's a continuation of the decolonialization process that started in the 1950s, 1960s. And, 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 and I think, um, you know, uh, I think France number, France's days in Africa is numbered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Carl, thank you again, my brother. Thank you for joining us. You know I got to get you back on here shortly, but I know you have a family, so I know you have to tend to that. Everybody who's watching, please stay. Don't go anywhere yet because I want to uh, talk to you all about something before we um, get off the air. But Carl, thank you so much for an outstanding show, man. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Rishi. Thank you. Right. Always a pleasure. And anytime you want to talk, you invite me back. I love to talk. <laughs> All right, my brother. Uh, I'll see you later. Everybody